Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Carver Planning Board meeting of August 8th, 2023. We will call the meeting to order at 7.03. If we would uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. It's nice to see some fresh faces here tonight. Um, well, uh, our first order of business is to continue a public hearing notice um, on the application of Beantown Home Services, Inc., requesting a special permit and site plan review pursuant to sections 3100, 5300, 4341, and 2230C of the Carver Zoning Bylaw law located at lot number five, Ricketts Pond Business Park, off Spring Street in Carver, Mass. Assessor's map 32, lot 1-5 in the Spring Street Innovation Zoning District. The lot will be comprised of approximately 6,621 square foot light industrial building with associated driveways parking areas, closed drainage system, septic system, and utility connections. Uh, this is was continued from our last meeting and at the applicant's request, we are, the chair will accept a motion to continue the public hearing of Beantown Home Services until 822. August 22nd, 2023, 7 p.m., meeting room number one, Carver Town Hall. I'll make that said motion. Motion Second. made by Mr. Robinson, Second. Second, seconded by Ms. Sordillo. Further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. John Gasky says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Alan Sahillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. If you could pass this down to Mr. Bott, please, so I don't forget. Our next order of business is an approval not required. The purpose of this plan is to create lot one and lot two from property owned by Deborah M. Salminen, Salminen Assessor's Map 101, lot 14, located at 15 Wenham Road in the residential agricultural slash village zoning district. Uh, do we have anyone here to speak on this matter? If you could just introduce yourself, sir. For the record, Stevie Cavallo of Farland Corp. Um, <clears throat> pretty straightforward form A, just looking to subdivide the existing lot into two and to demolish the existing structures. As you can see, part of the structure, uh, I'm, part of the property is uh, actually in two zones. You pull, village. pull that a little closer sure. to you, thanks. The village. Um, Village district and residential agricultural district uh, portion um, closest to the road is in the village district and that line is depicted on our plan um, parallel to the bottom of the page. Be happy to answer any questions. Um, if you could give us, tell, uh, what's the purpose of? Um, I mean, the applicants are here. My assumption is that they're looking to construct, uh, create two buildable lots. All right. Um, have you applied for a demolition permit with the town of Carver? We have not. Um, how would that work, Mr. Bott, as we can't create a non-conforming lot in this uh, sense? Actually, it has nothing to do with creating an ANR. ANR, the endorsement of the planning board, is wholly based on frontage on a way. That's it, frontage on a way. So if you have frontage on a way, the board endorses an ANR. If you'll see the note on my memo that I sent and the note on the plan, it notes that the planning board's endorsement, uh, their note on their plan says that the only, uh, uh, give me just a hint. Uh, the notation on the, on the plan reads, 
Planning board endorsement of this plan indicates only that the plan is not under subdivision control under MGL 41 section 81L and it does not indicate that the lot is buildable or that it meets zoning, health, conservation, or general bylaw requirements. The only criteria for the board's endorsement for an ANR is frontage on a way. It's frontage on a public way is properly in front of the board for endorsement. Now, but if we create this lot, there's a house on the lot line. Um, I'll stand by my previous statement. The only criteria, frontage on a way. Right. Doesn't uh, comply, right. doesn't say there's zoning, right. doesn't say it's buildable, it doesn't say any of that stuff. In fact, it says it on their plan that it's that. The only criteria, frontage on a way. All right. And in this case, they have adequate frontage. Uh, they also have uh, uses that are available both in the village district and in the RA district. Uh, so it's properly in front of the board uh, and uh, should be endorsed by the board. All right. It does say it on the plans. Um, questions, concerns from the board? Is there any wetlands around this thing at all? There are um, wetlands towards the rear and depicted and indicated that um, kind of heavy dotted line is the limit of wetland. And the top left part of the plan, yeah. which shows so, a line for Herring Brook back there as well. Towards the rear of the property. We also depict the edge of water in that line. It's a solid line. Just, just out of my, uh, just for my own. Uh, is this one of the ones on Wenham that is like decrepit? I personally have not gone there to see the property. Okay, I see some shaking heads we have the back there. Applicants here, okay. agreeing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know that uh, along that road, there's there's a section where there's some. Quite a few places that are very, they're decrepit, run down, and hazard to life. Okay. okay. Right. Further questions from the board? That's it. That Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to pro approve the ANR plan. Make a said motion to. For 15 Wenham Road. ANR plan. All right. Motion made by Ms. Sordillo. Second. Second by Mr. Gasky. Further discussion? Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. John Gasky, aye. Kevin Robinson, aye. Ellen Sordillo, aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Thank you very much for your time Thank this you. evening. Pick up the mileage tomorrow if you like. Great. Thank you. Our next order of business is a public <laughs> hearing on the application of Weather Vane at Silver Street, LLC, requesting a special permit and site plan review pursuant to sections 3100, 3900, and 5300 of the Carver Zoning Bylaw located at 7 and 9 Silva Street in Carver, Mass. Assessor's Map 67's lots 4-3 and 4F in the Residential Agricultural Zoning District. The proposed scope includes the construction of six new triplex residential townhouses consisting of 18 total units. If you could please introduce yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Taccio. I'm here for the applicant Weather Vane at Silver Street, LLC. Jim Bristol, Ryan Bristol are here uh, with me this evening. And then I've got Matt Collins and Taylor Corsano are here from the Crocker Design uh, Group. We're looking again at uh, 79 Silver Street, RA uh, zoned, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, 3900, which is the townhouse uh, development section of the bylaw, requires a special permit. Hi, everybody, uh, in the RA zone. Uh, again, we're looking at um, a total of 
six triplexes. So they're the uh, triplexes which Matt will show you, uh, resulting in 18 two-bedroom uh, units. And we're looking at 9.18 acres. Um, you folks will recognize this from Maine going on to Silva. As you're going along, when you look up and you see the uh, Eversource high tension uh, lines on the right, you can see two current curb openings. If you go uh, down there, uh, it's all kind of in the raw. It was land uh, next to and underneath that uh, easement, 150 foot wide uh, easement for the high tension wires, and uh, it was all graveled out. So if you go there now today, um, you're looking at a lot of uh, just kind of scrub growth that comes in uh, all the way down. If you go in and you pull down to the left, you're actually seeing some scarring uh, into the water table uh, where they graveled so deep. Um, so you're looking at uh, new um, age restricted townhouses. So we do have that. We've got the benefit on the, uh, the NULA, which is the formula under 3900, which is how we came up with the 18 units. So it's basically two units per acre. We're at about 9.18 acres. If we do the math, it comes out a little over 18. We round down to the 18. There's also an affordability component to this, the 10%, which results in two units. So go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I believe it's 15% now. Is it 15% now? It was passed at last town meeting, and I believe the Attorney General approved it recently. Okay, we'll take a look at that. Um, but so what so, you'll I'm have- I'm sorry to interrupt. Inter no, I actually appreciate it because I was just gonna do the math and I won't even try. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll circle back with you folks uh, on that and um, we'll, we'll confirm that and we'll change our filing uh, to, to make sure that that all complies. Um, I don't believe that uh, Fassner Neal uh, has the uh, peer review um, comments uh, back, or at least they weren't as of today. And our intent uh, today is to give you folks um, an overview. I'm going to ask uh, Matt Collins to, to go through, give you an <laughs> overview, familiarize um, everybody with the site. Uh, we're here also to uh, elicit comments. Um, some things are not complete, such as um, some of the landscape buffers, um, but we thought we'd be in a position to uh, come in and uh, you know, elicit some uh, comments on that. We're asking for three um, rather minor waivers, uh, which we can go through um, basically on the waivers. Um, one of the requirements is that we map out all significant trees, landscaping, uh, trees over 10 inches in caliper. This is a scrub site. So it's a site where we're just gonna be kind of cutting down bushes, doing some um, grading, and then actually adding uh, more uh, plantings to the site. So it doesn't really, in our, our opinion, uh, make sense to go out. It's just really a raw, scarred site. Um, the other has to do with the traffic, uh, having to do with um, daily and peak um, flows, and then also um, just what the on-site circulation is. We show the on-site circulation, we can discuss that. Uh, the peaks flows with only 18 units all being age-restricted are going to be hugely de minimis, um, and we know that from other projects uh, that we have uh, done. We can give you a summary on some of that. And then the final is that um, units 18, uh, 10 through 18, we've got small patios, which do go within, there's a 40 foot buffer around the property. Um, it's down to 40 feet when it's um, the age restricted. And we've got just their on grade, and then they, you know, basically additive. Those will also be in the place where we're going to speak with you folks about what we're going to add for potential buffers, et cetera. So um, Matt can, uh, can go through that uh, as well. Um, and if you folks don't have any questions preliminarily for me, I'll ask uh, Matt Collins to, to go through and run you through the plans. Uh, well, let's hear the, well, Matt. Great. Right. Thank Matt, you very much. If you'll introduce yourself, Matt. Matt, do you want to use this? Uh, to run uh, yeah, sure. Great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Jeff did a good job giving us the, the overlay. Um, as you can see, uh, as he mentioned, there's two parcels uh, beforehand. Um, it will be 9.18 uh, acres uh, with the NULA. Uh, there's some tractions with uh, wetland areas, water bodies. Uh, we did not have any on our site. Uh, there's a negative determination. Um, that uh, for any wetlands on ours. So that 9.18, we took the times two to get the 18 units. 
Um, as you can see with Silva Street, um, our entrance is here. Uh, it is a two-way entrance uh, paved uh, 24 feet in width. And um, with these units, uh, they're roughly 1,200 square foot um, gross floor area on these units. Um, there's a first floor and then there's a, oh, thank you. And on the second floor, that's where the guest room is. Um, we have 31 feet in between each uh, townhouse. Uh, and with that 31 feet, um, we also have the, with the uh, building envelope of 30 feet, uh, we, we made sure that we were outside of the building envelope in between each building. Um, for, so Jeff did a good job with the actual layout, but from an actual drainage uh, standpoint, we have underground drainage, uh, there are catch basins in the roadway. Um, everything slopes from the entrance down and we kept it through out, out so we could keep our main focus for the stormwater was to make sure that we had all of our um, developed area, especially impervious, uh, captured and retained in this infiltration basin that you can see over on, in this area. Uh, we're holding it within the 100-year storm, um, everything there. Um, another, with everything being gutted and quarried out, uh, we it's basically a low point in this lower southeastern corner of the site. Um, the abutters around and our site, every, everything goes down to there. So our main focus was to make sure uh, in our design that we are also keeping everything within contained within our site. Uh, and we did that with that infiltration basin taking any, anything developed and then all the undeveloped area is going to make its way back down to that, uh, that low point and that southeastern corner. Uh, septic wise, we have a septic on site over in this eastern area here. We filed our septic design with the Board of Health. We have a hearing next week to, um, to go over that along with the wells. Um, and speaking with the wells, other utilities on site, the individual units all have their own gas, electric, um, septic, and water, um, all of which is underground. Uh, for uh, private drinking water, we have two private wells. Uh, well one is on this northwestern corner up here, um, and it is providing water service for units 10 through 18. Uh, the second well is down um, in here and that is being uh, providing water for units one through nine. Um, oh, also for uh, backtrack quickly, the, um, for parking, um, we have 51 spots uh, provided for parking, um, which meets the 40 that are required um, under the regulations. Um, and then finally, with our uh, open space area, we needed, Sorry. Sorry. It's when you miss the mouse. Yeah. Our open space area is down here. Um, under the regulations, it requires thirty percent, so we hold into that that 30% for open space, and it's all uh, contiguous, um, just in that, that mass area and down at the bottom and here. Um, other than that, I think Jeff covered, I don't know if you have any other thoughts, but. Yep. So the open space 30% requirement is 55 and over restricted, and we are above that um, calculation. Um, with that, uh, just as far as circulation is concerned, you can see we kind of have that, that turnaround island there. Yep. We've templated uh, that. Uh, we're looking at uh, entrances 24 in width. Yep. 24 in width with one foot um, asphalt uh, Cape Cod berms on either side, so it winds up being up to 26. Um, so it's got you know, more than ample for a uh, private uh, driveway to you know, development of this size. Um, and I think that probably concludes our just our introduction. Right. Um, have you received a letter from the Board of Health out outlining some of their concerns? Yes, and we're going to be uh, before them next week. All right. 
Is this two lots? Uh, so we are proposing uh, to have them in the two well lots so that we could have one well on each. Um, I see a, a property line, internal property line. Is this one big lot or is this two separate lots? So we were looking to have it be two separate lots that be one single tract of land. It, uh, if with, it's two separate lots, it's not going to meet the requirements of the townhouse bylaw, because if you're separating it into two lots, all of a sudden you have what a a five acre lot and a four acre lot roughly, and then and then you're looking at the five acre lot being the townhouse development, which would be what double that, so ten ten on that not 18 so I'm, yeah. I'm so, trying to figure this out. So what we're going to do is we need to meet with the Board of Health uh, next week. They've got you know a very um, local specific uh, regulation which is drafted on well lots uh, as far as going through this. There are currently two lots and the question is going to be whether they're aggregated and then also we have a deed restriction on one or how we uh, wind up working that out. What we're doing um, this evening um, with you folks without going before them yet is to address um, just the zoning and you know basically the site plan special permit type. Uh, well, that's a big question. Yep, well, and it's it's taken. We've taken a look at it, but it's something that we went through the questions. We've got them, and we've got the hearing uh, or the meeting with them next week. So um, I can't give you a definitive answer right now, but you've flagged it, which is appreciated, and it's something that we're going to have to. Um, you know, take a look at and deal with. Has an ANRAD been done on this property? Yes. And so we have one, and it's a negative um, negative determination with respect to. There's a an area which was scalped when they um, came in, and they actually graveled it, and they pierced the uh, water table. So it's it's an interesting area, but it's not jurisdictional. Okay. Um, Is that what's in the uh, lower right? Um, Where the arrow is, it looks like a pond from overhead. Yep. So when you pull in and you look down, the land all goes down, um, basically falls down to to the left when you're looking at it. If you pull in under the um, under the, the tension, um, there's water there, but again, it's not jurisdictional. It's man-made, created from the uh, the graveling operations, and I don't have it with me. And I'll ask these folks to to have um, the um, the ORAD, which was put together, but it's not um, it's not jurisdictional. This land, um, I mean, if you go out there, it's um, it's it's really chopped up because of all the graffling operations. Nobody really had any appreciation or desire to leave it in a um, topographical um, area that's usable. It's it's really a mess. It's got mounds that are on it. It's got different cuts and um, different scarring. And if you take a look um, at the proposed grading, you can see this quite a bit. Uh, you can see the existing grades underneath, and then you can see what some of the over uh, overlying uh, regrading is. And it's it's actually quite a bit up where the um, up where the houses are. The loam and seed is uh, actually uh, specified for that area that leads down to. Um, that big cut down to the water table, and we don't have a lot of specificity on that right now, other than the loam and seed. Um, the idea is to retain that and have that look like you know a nice, um, a nice feature. Uh, but again, um, some more input on you know some of that uh, would be appreciated as well. Um. There's concerns raised about the potential of segmentation in regards to uh, 310 CMR 2201, and I would expect 30111 um, in regards to uh, the requirements involved in public well systems. Um, With respect to segmentation on adding additional the requirement potential. that this as as an entirety exceeds or meets the threshold criteria of uh, of um, 310 CMR or, or 301 CMR um, in regards to this or yep and we'll address that as well <coughs> We are going to require um, written permission from Mass Electric 
in regards to any work to be done or any development inside of their easement. Can this has there been any um, uh, has there been any um, uh, I guess uh, testing of the water table uh, in, in that it could support this uh, amount of I mean you've already got we've already got a fairly densely populated uh, area around them and then to go in and add another um, 18. Uh, families uh, in a very concentrated area um, and it's you're butting up against um, quite a few properties and you know that's that's a big strain on the uh, on the water on the water source there it's uh, uh, yeah so we, we have done test pits all in the uh, developed area uh, we found that the groundwater was actually lower around where the development is uh, it was down to, we have our, I think it was 110.2 is where we found groundwater um, in this lower area in here with our, um, and our slabs up at 120 or right, so. So, the, and then the, as well, you the, go. What, no, the question that I have is you add 18 more families into the area, everybody drawing water. Is there enough water to support your project? Because you've got all these other families drawing water, somebody's got a pool. Um, there's uh, quite a few, quite a few things around there. Um, uh, people that have been living have, have been living there, uh, and uh, then you want to throw a housing development in the middle of it. We do have water shortages. How is this going to affect all that? Um, so for, it, it actually does help having the over 55 community. Um, you'll have less water usage for these homes as you, and then you would like a typical right, subdivision. We're still, we're still looking at throwing 18 families in there, whether it's two people or whether it's three or 10. Yeah. It, it, it's a drain on the resources, yeah. uh, on the natural resources that are right yep. there. So it's basically, if you just run the DEP numbers, I think it's like 2,700 gallons per day because it's the 55 and over and it's only the two bedroom. So it's, you know, it's, it's there. That's a, that's not a significant number. Um, do you want well testing with respect to well, that's volume? I mean, for the 18, it just, what, what do you expect John? Well, well that, I, I, and maybe this will help, but this project's going to fall under a public well system. There's, I don't see any potential way to get around this. On the, um, are you, are you, it, and that's going to push the threshold of the, the MEPA review or Mass EPA. That's, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, it's mentioned here, but um, it, it's my understanding that at, at a certain threshold that this kicks in regardless uh, under the state, wh whether the town of Carver. Yep. So we'll, when we speak next week to um, Board of Health, I mean, there's the water usage is also, we see it as you know, basically the reciprocal. The 55 and over on the two bedroom units is only 150 gallons per day of septic outflow. Um, so if we use that again, it's, it's 2,700 um, you know, gallons per day. To be able to do that, to achieve the goals for the over 55, plus to get the affordability component, um, you know, we, we believe that uh, you know, it's, it's a highly efficient um, way of obtaining those goals for the town and to put it together. Um, as opposed to single family houses, some of the abutting, I mean, we've got you know, huge land, large land areas with single family homes, multiple bedrooms, et cetera. We also have, I mean, there's an abutting property that's I think three units per acre. So I think that if we go through and look at your, the bylaw, I mean, the, you know, now it's got a higher component apparently for the uh, affordability, but we comply, um, we comply with all of that for the zoning. Um, to the extent that we have to um, take a look at both Board of Health, also some of the water withdrawal, 
we'll follow up on that. We appreciate your, you know, your, your bright lining it for us. And that's something that we're obviously going to have to satisfy um, boards to be able to do that for the special permit. I, I will say that um, I personally am thrilled with over 55 communities in which Carver was the retirement capital of Eastern Massachusetts personally. So I, I, have, I have a lot um, going for this. Uh, if I'm going to ask um, some uh, questions and they may be repetitive, I'm just because I made yeah, those we'll earlier. Them down. So, sure. Uh, I have one quick. Are these rentals or purchase? You know, we don't know right now. Um, it's an excellent your question. Your proposal was rentals, I thought. Excuse me, sorry. I, I thought way back when these were rental units. Way back when they were proposed as a rental um, because okay. it, that was also tied into a bigger picture. Um, right now, things are um, lending. Lending environment is a little different. Uh, rates were a little different. So it's undetermined. It is undetermined. Okay. And also um, pricing, things of that nature. There's a lot in flux right now. Um, so to be able to look ahead and, and predict that, I, we just can't do that now. That, I think, was my question number three um, from okay. last Cause week. I was going to ask if this was going to be similar to the other development where it's a condominium type style. It depends. If it's ownership, it will be uh, condominium type style. If it's um, if it's rental, it'll you know obviously be a single um, entity that that kind of controls it and rents them out. Well, we we would require a condo um, covenant regards to to that, and and we would need to know before we approved it because town council is going to want to take a look at that uh, a condo agreement if that's the direction that we're going in. Great. I appreciate that. May I? Please. Um, so you were just given like numbers on the use of the water, this, right? Now, um, being this bigger unit, I'm sure there's going to be lawn in there, correct? It being what? I apologize. There's going to be lawn in there, correct? Yes. So you're going to have a sprinkler system in there, correct? I don't know yet. You don't know. So, because that would not show up on your findings on how much water you actually use. So you could actually be using a lot more than what you think you use. Oh, I'm sorry. You asked me uh, a question. Yeah. Like I, you just said. Uh, oh, I don't want to. Says... I don't want to argue. I just no, I understand no, that. He, yeah. He, I'm he, not arguing. No, I'm no I know. I know. You're trying to clarify, but he's saying that the usage per person based on a 55 and older, and then you add extensive sprinkler systems and lawn watering systems and he wants to make sure that's included in the calculations for water yeah no i understand that that's okay. where i was going that's all i wasn't arguing that, did, did i do yeah that's okay. exactly what right. i was looking at yeah and no um no someone mentioned i think swimming pools things like that there's well, no, no he mentioned that people around the area have swimming pools got it so that's what he was saying is putting this whole big unit in there is that going to affect everybody else around the area where they have swimming pools, is that going to cut the water down on them? Gotcha. Understood. Right. Um, and also looking at the uh, over by lot ten uh, or unit ten, rather, uh, you've got the pro you got the proposed uh, well. Can you show me what ten is? Looks please? like it's going to be less, right around a hundred feet or so from uh, an already existing well. Um, and you know, wondering how that's going to draw away, uh, draw resources away from that existing well. And do you see uh, where the other uh, well is? Yep. Is it this? Uh, can you see my picture? This? That's, that's yeah. So that that's the proposed, and that's the existing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the other one? Is it up? Right in here. Right here. Okay. Thanks. So we are we're outside the the setback for that for, for a private well. Um, so we went through the regulations for being um, greater than 100 feet from that existing well. Um, I think being that far away, I, I feel like it wouldn't have an impact. So we'll, we'll respond to that. Um, dwelling units shall be varied according to 3942. I'm just saying that you should probably ask for a waiver of that one if they're all going to be two bedroom it, it shouldn't I, I don't I can't speak for the board but it it's unlikely to be a big issue with the board uh, are they just two-story buildings 
Yeah, they're approximately um, like 12, 50 square feet each. Um, so not, not really large. And they only have one, um, one car garages as well. They're going to have bedrooms on the first floor? Yes. OK. The second floor is also, it's a smaller second floor. It's really just, you go up the stairs, and it's just really a bedroom and then a bathroom up for the guests. OK. Um, now, you required 40 foot of vegetative screening. Uh, from the, the property lines. Uh, and that's, you know, I, I understand that some of you're requesting a variance on one, two, three, four, five, five of them, but that's supposed to be a natural uh, growth barrier to protect the um, adjoining residences uh, from headlights, noise, and various other aspects. Do we have any idea what these buildings are going to look like? Uh, yeah, I should have. Yeah, we can put that up. Do you want, um, Matt, to get, get, will this reach? You will. OK. And the buffer areas are not to be counted towards open space. So this is just the front view, but um, we also have the footprint as well. Now, are they going to be that singular architectural? Are they all going to be that singular same architectural style? Uh, they're all very similar. The garages are kind of ro rotated a little differently, but they're to, all to break it up so that the, then they don't all look like the I same. <laughs> the, you know, the same building change colors change a couple of the exterior aspects so that they're not all. So we'll, yeah. bear, we'll bear the colors. Yes. So yeah, we can do that. And what's the height? The height again? The height, they're roughly around 25 to 28 feet. Well, we're going to have to see that. Um, I know there's a 1.2 foot, uh, 1.2 times for your separation between the two buildings. So if it's 25, then we have them at 35 feet away from each other right now. So if it stays there, then we'll keep that 31 feet, so roughly around that 25, 28 range. Uh, if you look, so this is the first floor coming in, and they're kind of mirroring each other when they go in. Um, the bedrooms are in the back, but then this over here shows the second floor, and as you can see, it's really just the guest room and the uh, the bathroom up and on the second floor. Connected to the garage. Uh, so the garage, they come in right to, and come in and there's a little bathroom in the den, little hallway, um, right in here, that the garage goes right uh, into the each individual um, unit. Mr. Evans? Mr. Chair, through you, uh, I'd like to go back to the net, the buffer. Um, the, is anything else in there going to be taken down? And if you have an idea, could you, could you give me an idea of what we're looking at between... Uh, this property and four Main Street, um, eight Main Street, yep. five Silver Street, and um, probably eleven Silver Street. What yep. is yep. there? Uh, what is there now for a buffer? Yeah. So, uh, what's there now? There's a lot of it's um, it's scrap growth. Um, if you go out the 40 feet from the property lines, um, it gets kind of messy. And then our um, our plans. Uh, look at particularly with respect to those three properties we have those noted as well um, those are kind of on the southwest corner um, we've got some grading which matches that so we actually propose to go in to some grading we don't have um, our landscaping uh, proposal yet um, what we did was we read the buffer as being 40 feet well retained in a natural vegetative state to the maximum extent feasible. In this instance, instead of just kind of keeping all of that scrap that's there that's extremely unattractive, what we intend to do is to come in with um, arbovitae, come in with a planting plan so that we can show you folks and you can show the neighbors of those properties that we're proposing something 
um, substantial, which will block, which will be more attractive either way um, than what's there now. Um, so that will be our um, proposal. So you would be asking uh, to disturb the natural vegetation in order to put up a significant um, buffer of, of Lake St. Arbor Valley hedges? What we're looking to do is to disturb that natural area so that we can um, first do the grading that's required to, to get the land to... So the topography is going to change. Ex it, yeah, so to get that um, smooth as we show on the topography, and then also we have some uh, swales incorporated as well to be able to direct um, some of the, um, you know, the, the surface waters down and around and then down towards that low spot, and we can go through some more of that um, in, in detail. What we will do as part of that is propose arbovitae, which will then be kind of outbound of the swales, pretty much at the toe of the slope. So there's a slope that comes down at the property line, and Matt can show you that in more detail. And then what we'll do is we'll propose to yeah, have plantings uh, along there. We didn't want to get into um, too much tonight. Um, number one, we don't have it. We also don't have um, the Fuss and O'Neill comments yet. So we figured instead of just throwing something out there, we would come in and we would say, you know, sure. we, we know that there's the 40 foot. If you go out there, it's a, it's a messy site, right? It's, it's kind of- I speak for the whole board, but I, yeah. I can speak for myself saying that, you know, uh, going forward, if that's something that we're gonna be looking at down the road, I definitely want the largest arbovites that, or the largest um, plantings that you can get in there for, you know, a, a good buffer. Yeah, so what what we usually do on that is um, we we kind of find a Goldilocks size that goes in first because we find that those um, take and grow larger over time um, as opposed to some some people go in and they just go out and they buy the hot you know the, the tallest stock out of the gate and then they don't necessarily grow together they don't necessarily get much higher um, so what we'll do is we'll come up with a plan and um, show you folks uh, what the proposal is. But we've we've done that in other other spots, and we've got a sweet spot that comes in, and then um, they get really good growth in, in coverage. All right. Um, and so since I have your attention, <laughs> you got my attention. Um, traffic analysis. Are you yep. guys going to try to do see to it that that gets done? I know we're only looking at. 18 res more residents, but we do have Waterview Village that has 54 residents. You know, this is going to be 18 more. So I just want to get an idea of, you know, of what's going to go on if you're going to, you know, be, be proposing to put this in. How much more traffic are we going to be looking at on a regular basis? So we were, um, that's actually, we did ask for that as a waiver um, to see just with the 18. We've got, um, as you, you know, we've got other properties that kind of function. They're the same demographic. Um, the, num the numbers are really de minimis as far as, you know, the people don't necessarily all have jobs, so you don't have people all leaving at the same, you know, time in the morning to go out to, um, you know, go out and uh, go to work, so that it really doesn't have peaks because you have um, a lot of people where it's age restricted that don't necessarily um, have to, you know, go to em employment, et cetera. Um, right. well, so I, I actually, I'd like to refer to the fire department and the police department on that if they think you know that's necessary. Not to mention the town. Yep. So what what we'll do? Um, I had mentioned that um, we can we have the templates on how you know movements will be throughout the site. We will put together um, a, a summarization um, on that. So, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, and the infiltration basin is that going to be raised or is that going to is that buried? Uh, we we did try to work it into the um, topography of the existing right now. There is there will be some fill in the area, I'd say like halfway when you get closer towards that southeastern area, there is some fill, but it is raised um, just above so that there won't be any surface uh, water going into there. It'll be a little berm along it. So it's really only meant for that developed area up to that um, that northwestern area. Um, so no surface runoff is going to go there. It'll all bypass that and make its way down to that, um, where that kind of standing water is on the, the lower southeastern portion. Okay. Uh, and then I guess the only other question is, I hope that um, you guys will be prepared to, you know, speak personally with each of the abutters, 
you know, uh, what their concerns are going to be, um, what they might like. Uh, they might like something different as far as the buffer is concerned um, to work with something so that they don't have to, you know, look upon this. Not that it's, I know it's going to be done in good taste and it's going to be a beautiful project, but, you know, again, these are being built in their backyard. So I, I would like them to have, you know, good communication with you. And um, I guess the last thing is, as far as the, um, the parking spaces, are you considering the attached uh, part to the um, dwellings a parking space? Because I, I counted them and I didn't get, you said what, 41 parking? 51. Uh, I got 51. 51. So where I see three, where I see threes and a four, um, are you also considering, as far as parking spaces, um, I don't see the 51 unless you're including the, the grade areas in in front of the dwellings. Yep, so we're counting the garage okay. um, for each one and then each one has their own sing, uh, single parking space, uh, their little driveway. All right. So I've got 36. I guess I could do the math. Yeah, I've got 36 just from the garages in that one spot that each of them have and then there are 15 um, visitors parking spaces. Okay. So that, that's where we got the 51 from. All right. That's what I got. Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm just going to follow up. Uh, so we will want a landscaping plan <coughs> and it should be designed so that that 40 foot buffer zone, um, it's not a garden. It should be returned to its natural state in regards with that and the arborvite is meant or whatever you decide to do in that is meant to buff that up. Please. And a couple of, couple of quick questions also with regards to, uh, so looking at looking at the overall uh, lines here, it uh, looks like because um, you've got a, on the property lines, you've got a couple of, you've got a U-shape around uh, a couple of houses on Silva Street. And looking at it, uh, there's a paved driveway on, uh, on the right hand. Yep, we see it. Yeah, and it looks like there's a paved driveway that encroaches on the property line on the left-hand <clears throat> side as well. Um, what <clears throat> is there a plan to address that right now? How is how is that going to be handled? Um, do, you, do you mean so the two so for I mean, eleven, eleven and thirteen Silver Street? Those two, their property, their right. driveways on ours. Uh, we don't have any plans to do anything with those right now. John, I didn't notice those. We'll take a look. I'm not aware if there's an easement or, or what's happening. <coughs> obviously, um, you know, that neck of land, I don't think that it's of, you know, I don't think we obviously need it for this. Right. But we'll take a look at that and respond uh, okay. before. And where is the other one? I'm sorry. I appreciate it. Yeah, so it's, um, so it, it encroaches slightly on, right the, here. on the left-hand side. Oh, I see it. And fully in on the right-hand side. Yep, we'll we'll take a look. Um, yeah. the, in, the intent isn't to um, upset anyone's apple carts, and, right. you know, as with respect to uses. Yeah, we'll I just didn't know if that was something that was going to remain an easement and maybe have a uh, it was going to end up being a utility drive to the back or something. Yep. I'm not sure. You want to do the state walk? Hmm. We do the state walk. Yes, I want to do the state walk. Um, I'm gonna. Don't let me forget, but I, I'm going to, I just made my list. I know we've covered some of them, but uh, we're going to want monitoring wells. Um, we're going to talk to our engineer in regards to that. Uh, utilities, where are utilities coming in? Up the road, they'll be underground? Yes, they'll be underground. Um, Silva Street has a, uh, we spoke with the gas company and they, they have a service. Rubbish? Um, Rubbish. Private. But it'll be private, okay. Individual or? I thought you were saying rubbish. No, I, yeah. where's, <laughs> where's, where's, <laughs> no, no, where, where's your rubbish <laughs> area you going? <laughs> where's it going to be? Because we will want that berm screened and some sort of vermin control plan in regards to that. Oh, we can do that, yeah. Uh, make sure it's got, it should be notated. 
Um, also, your uh, snow removal should be notated on here. Yeah, unless we it's... have that. Um, yeah, they have that. There's okay. one. Yeah, no, you can't see it on the screen. Yeah, it's fine. I, I hadn't, don't, don't I hadn't seen it. It's, yeah. yeah, it's um, see the oval one between yeah, here. It's down here down, there's one down, one down the bottom here. Of that one. one over here. We had three uh, separate yep. areas for that. One. Off the uh, off the table. Uh, and will be the, there be a separate building for uh, mail, or is it going directly to each and individual? Home? The, the attention for right now is to each individual have their own, their own mail. I would check with the post office in regards to that. I think they've made a move towards community boxes at this point. Yeah. Uh, your entranceway is how far away from the intersection with Main Street? Uh, what, what was that, sorry? The, the inter so the road is how, many, how far away from uh, the intersection of Main Street? Several hundred feet? I'd say it's several hundred. I don't know the exact number, but it's... Okay. Um, all right. Okay. We, we'll want that number. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because you're going to have a lot of people coming and going and, uh, in relation to that intersection, which is surprisingly backs up quite far. Let's see. At least they've got a light. Cool. Um, open space. Uh, what's your plans in regards to that? Yep. Yeah. Right now, um, we show it as um, loamed and seeded. Um, we'd like to retain kind of the, the water scar that's down there. Um, if you folks uh, have any input um, on that, you know, where right now it would look like, you know, kind of a seeded meadow that goes down. Um, if there's anything, you know, that comes to mind, please. You know, well, I was more that. concerned, is it going to be turned over to the Conservation Commission? Is it going to be put in a trust? Is it going to be kept? It, it, there's certain requirements in, in regards to that in the, in the bylaw that you should you should check on. We'll, we'll do no specific um, plan it, right now, but we'll look at that. Because it, it should have suitable access because it's going to be it's going to be public. Yep, we'll look at that. Not a problem. Have the have you been in front of Concom at all? They have no recommendations. Yeah, no, uh, no concom uh, jurisdiction. Okay, that's right. The, yeah, what about the, has the DPW been notified in regards to this and the police and the fire? They should all. I don't believe so. Yep, they, plans have been sent to everybody. They have been. Okay. I want I want to make sure because it specifically says that it's your responsibility to make sure it's done. So. Uh, that was that was the majority of my questions. Uh, that's a good question. Well, I got a question for you. Uh, if it's going to be 55 and older, are there going to be sidewalks? No. No, there are no sidewalks uh, out on Silva, and we don't have any internal um, sidewalks. So they're going to have to walk in the street during the snow? Yeah. Um. Also, uh, could you give us a rundown on your septic system? Uh, I did very briefly. I could bring you through it again, um, just quickly. We have uh, two septic tanks that are three. Uh, there's two tanks. And okay. Then a, and then a I pump thought chamber. I saw three on the map. Oh, uh, then there's a pump chamber as well. Okay. Yeah. And then there that leads to a pump chamber, and. Um, the pump chamber uh, has a force main that makes its way um, over to the soil absorption system that's over here. Uh, and this is the reserve area here. And it's uh, 2,700 um, gallons per day for that system. There's eight uh, trenches for that that are 77 foot long total uh, that are in here. And that should be outside the buffer zone, right? Because there's a 40 foot buffer zone along that side too, right? So um, everything should be off the 40 foot. Um, but most especially if there's issues or problems 
and there's overflow or various issues or you got to go back in and, and dig it up for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's going to affect, affect people and it's, uh, it is a structure. Uh, I'm sure we can give it some leeway in regards to that, but um, there is going to have to be some sort of buffer between the two properties. Yeah, we do have some room to go okay. to help. We could slide it down and ha provide some screening on the um, the side closest to is that 13 Silver Street. We could provide some type of screening for that. Yeah, we'll 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 look at that. Um, we weren't anticipating that, so it, we. We'll definitely look at that. I just want to follow up with Richard. I didn't mean to answer currently. Um, where it's so small and we've got all the guest parking and that's all going to be plowed. Um, we've had other, not actually this tight, but other similar situations where um, we've tried putting sidewalks in, et cetera, and it just winds up being all this like chunky little segments. Um, so when experience something like this where everything's going to be um, plowed, the people are comfortable. Hey, I understand, way. but you know, I look at the other side of it. You know, grandchildren are there; they don't want them out in the street walking around, right? I mean, and I know it's only a small complex. Yeah. But again, you're talking, you know, 55 and older. You don't know if you're going to have any handicapped people in there. Yeah. You know, if they have a wheelchair, they're in the middle of the road. Yeah. That's my concerns. Yep. We'll and we'll look at some more details on that. What we usually do is we usually say, where are the people going to go? Um, and where Silver Street doesn't, it's all just rural. It does, you know what I mean? It's, it's country drainage, if you will, especially out in front. There are no sidewalks. So what we usually do is we usually go to match if someone's going to leave the driveway and go somewhere. Um, so that's the balance that we've got. We'll look at that further and um, you know, get, a, get a better response. And I understand, but you know, 90% of the residents around here have a big piece of land, you know, so yeah. there's plenty of room. But now you're sticking 18 units in there, so there's 18 plus cars going to be in there all the time. Yeah. So that's my concern is you know more like safety more than anything. And we'll definitely look at it. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't no, saying. No, no. I didn't want to sound curt. I just we've dealt with this before, and I realized after oh, no, I answered, I was, I was come like, back with another question. You know, which you know, we're good. Those are my concerns. Appreciate and I wanted to apologize if I interrupted your question or your response in any manner. <clears throat> I'm not entirely certain on the parking requirements. I thought they were somewhat less than what you're. They are. They, yes, it, because it, I you think... have a lot of spots here, and that might give you a little room to move everything out because it, it looks like 10, 11, and 12 are also within the 40 foot zone. And we'll also want uh, screening some type of out by the Silver Street. Nothing. Uh, I understand. Yeah, it's um, it's actually two per unit and then one per five for a guest spot. So that winds up if I count it, it's forty, and um, we've got it. We've got an overabundance of some spaces, but we could handle the drainage. Uh, and a lot of times um, we go into planning boards and they say more, more, more. Um, so we need to we need oh. to find where the, the you know the Goldilocks yeah, spot is on given us. given. Even at that, even at 55 and up, a lot of people still have two cars, so they're going to need. We we need to find that to, sweet. We need yeah. to find that sweet spot. But we show that um, we. It's not a problem with you know the impervious that we have, but the question is, you know, is is that too much? You know, it's that's yep. feedback. Well, feedback will be appreciated. We did just have a, a presentation in regards to impervious surfaces and, and the state really wants us to cut down on them. So I think the board is willing to work work with that. Good. We um, are too. In regards to recharge rates. Questions? Concerns? Good. Well, thank you gentlemen very much. Uh, it is a public hearing, so I'm, I am going to open it up to anybody that would like to speak in regards to this. So. Uh, I'll have to ask you to give this. Yep, you gotta give it up. Thank you very much. Forget that. Good evening. You just uh, please identify yourself. Yes, uh, my name is Ron Warwick. I live at Six Silver. Uh, I'm actually not on a butter, but I have concern 
uh, I've got two point wells. Uh, I do, <laughs> I've been here for 37 years and haven't had a problem. You know, even we've had droughts and so on and so forth. Never had an issue with my wells. And I think this could be an issue. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't know how many people here have an extra twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars to put a an artesian well in, but it's, I'm not going to feel real good if I have to do that. You know, uh, that's not really a good, say, depiction of, of the property. I, you, these these guys bought a piece of property that's a tough piece of property to work on. Now I know they've brought in a lot of fill. It, it appears that it's tailings. Uh, a lot of stone and and uh, chips of wood and so on and so forth. Now they're going to have to bring this property up a lot, and sooner or later, say hey, let's say 20 years down the road, I I do construction too. I've done that you know for years, and uh, you're going to have some cracked foundations and stuff sooner or later. With in fact, the, there was a pond on there. I know it's been there for 50 years. I, that's so that's why I say it's not a good depiction of actually what that property looked like, but that was filled in, just recently filled in. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, what, what the, I mean, you have another piece of property to the right, which is gonna be like the drainage area. Uh, that was only recently introduced to the wet, there's the, you know, there's a pond over there, but that's within 10 years because that's what they dug out, uh, you know, when they moved, removed the, the fill from there. So I don't know if they traded one for the other. I don't think they can do a hell of a lot with the one on the right-hand side, but the one on the left-hand side where there's going to be six buildings, that's going to be, you're going to have to do a hell of a lot of work there to, to, to bring that up. I don't know how it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, and I, I know a lot of the people, I know every, basically everybody here, and there was, you know, there's a lot of concerns over, over the wells. I mean, you guys know, you've already talked about it a few times, so. I spoke about it the last time I was here, and I'm still concerned. I'm getting good water out of both wells. I never had an issue. I had to put a new point in one. That happens after years, but I mean, I've been there for 37 years, so. So that would be my concern, that and, you know, I don't know how much they're gonna have to, more they're gonna have to fill up, but there's the, the building on the, on the, I think it was on the far left. That was, that would be like, pretty close to being directly over where that pond was, you know? And that was there a long time. I'm not sure how long, but I know it's been there 50 years, so. A lot longer than I've been here. Well, we're gonna have, the CONCOM gave uh, a negative determination in regards to this, according, and I'm expecting Mr. Bott has that on file. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, some follow-up questions when you're done. Okay. Okay. Appreciate Thank you very much, you. Ron. Um, has any filling taken place on this property? Um, it, Any further questions? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, I'm, I have a question for, for the gentleman here. So, yes, there was a, a negative sorry, determination. I, I identify uh, Jim Bristol from Mr. Uh, Weathervane. Yep. Um, so there was a, a small area. Um, that was part of the negative determination where excavation was too deep um, and we have graded that area. Um, Did you, is this permitted? Did you, were you permitted? Well, it was a negative. Fill or, or grade this it, area? It was that a no negative. No work should be done on, on the prop, no work should be done on the property without, um, without a, a site plan or, uh, because the, isn't, isn't that why we're here? Yep. Um, All right, so keep that in mind, because okay. we're going to be doing a site walk at some yep. point. Yep. Thank you very much, Mr. Bristol. My name is Donna Clark, and I uh, live at 4 Main Street, with Blue Guard 69. Hey, Mr. Clark, would you mind pulling that microphone over? Okay. Our note taker is listening. <clears throat> We moved there in 69, and that pond was had frogs and turtles in it. Now, where are they now? They're all buried. That, uh, my land goes back, and it's about 100 foot of that pond, almost 100 foot. 
I have three, almost 300 foot running on top of the bank here. What happened to the turtles and the frogs that people so concerned about? They're buried. When was the, uh, well, I'll, I'll ask um, a follow-up question when, when you're done, Mr. Clark. Thank you. I, I will ask the question. If, if there's somebody here, did, did you have your negative determination from CONCOM before any filling or grading took and, place? And uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, let me, let me ask them and see if I can get an answer. Okay. I'd like to ask some more questions too. Uh, okay. Well then, then we'll wait. Okay. Please, Mr. Clark. You All right. Now, top on my land there, what are they going to do? Just, uh, they're going to put a fence up. If they do go through with this, there should be a steel fence put up on top of that. Okay, I've made a note, yeah. And another concern too is the wells. Yes. I've got two wells. I've got one that's 480 feet deep. And uh, it's a pretty good well, but, but these other people have got all shallow wells. So are they gonna, are they gonna fix the wells if they go dry? I expect that any damage in regards to a project has to be addressed. Well, what about 20 years down the road to go dry? Yeah, well, we'll have to get answers to those questions. But like I say, that pond was there when I moved there. It had been there for a long time then. Teddy Vaughn owned the land. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Um, please, yes, and uh, there's, there's a lot of questions about the uh, pond. I mean, you've even named it the Estates at Vaughn Pond. That's what we just named it after. Uh, can you introduce Vaughn. yourself? Taylor, can you introduce yourself? Oh, yeah, sir. Oh. Uh, Taylor Corsano with Crocker Design Group. Yeah. Just... To answer your RDA question, we got an RDA, I believe it was either the end of 2019 or beginning of 2020 um, from CONCOM, and it's been extended due to the COVID cold. Uh, tolling period until November of 2023. Of 2023. And yep. have you had uh, uh, NRAD done or an ORAD done on this property? We don't need either of them because we don't have wetlands. That's why we got the oh, RDA. Right. Yep. You've had the negative determinant. <laughs> yes. So, because that's a very important aspect of our job, so we have to know where the wetlands nope. are. Um, so, uh, that, that does answer the question, yes, that Perfect. the Conservation Commission did not consider it a wetland. And so then what happened? Was it filled, graded? I believe you guys just did some work with out there due to the craziness of the site. They were trying to kind of move some stuff just to make it a little flatter and easier out there. Well, again, no filling, grading, or anything is supposed to take place without, sure. without the permits. Gotcha. Or approved site plan. All right, thank you. Yep. Is anybody else from the audience that has any questions, concerns? Now, was that granted by ERC? Did, well, ER, did ERC do anything? I, I don't know. Well, that would have been for the Hi, reason. I'm Andrea at 11 Silva Street, abutting. Um, that's if there's a rodent problem, yeah, right next to it. That's right the, next to the power lines, actually. Okay, yeah. Has any construction ever, like, made rodents go into any of the neighboring houses or anything? Uh, you got, Andrea, if so, if would that be taken care of? I uh, actually um I don't know the the filling grading and leveling of of land does uh does cause that problem and and that should be uh, addressed in in our construction plan so absolutely if if you want to make a note of that and um just a question about the power lines cuz we're right abugging that sorry um is is there going to be any work done like around those cuz those are really big scary power lines not they're not huge but they are definitely there is that 
like Eversource's property that there's like a little road that's right behind, right next door to our second driveway. And I just didn't know if there was going to be, if that's like an access road or if the power company owns that. It's, it's a, public utility easement and uh -huh. if i'm remembering correctly it is 150 feet wide uh -huh. and that we are requiring eversource's approval for any work or okay. construction to be done in within that easement so they'll like know about everything everything will just be safe yeah like, I, I'm we sorry, wouldn't want I'm people no I'm... no don't be sorry cuz <laughs> we don't it, we're all about the health and safety and and, yeah. and that's supposed to be the the main part of our job so we wouldn't want anybody getting hurt so if if they're going if work's being done in there it has to be done with the approval of of the utility company because we all have like animals back there and like livestock that we depend on for like eating and living and i just didn't know if there was going to be you know any the power lines can i just if, as long as everything's going to be safe Absolutely. that was just a major concern and would there is there going to be a number or like are the neighbors going to be able to always be in contact or have someone to contact in case something goes wrong on their end but it affects our property so it, this is the public hearing is mm -hmm. is a, a, so you're talking down the line yeah well that's we we have uh, the town of carver has inspections divisions and a, a board of health that, mm -hmm. that it will address any issues in regards to this um, Mr. Bristol is seems very congenial and mm -hmm. is, is I'm sure will, is willing to listen to any questions or concerns and, and that's why he's here because mm -hmm. um, he wants to take all of this into account uh, now they haven't decided if they're going for a condominium or individual ownership at this point so that's that's something that we're trying to decide ourselves and we'll be able to like we'll be able to come to meet more meetings uh, and know more about this you sorry I, I'm you, no don't <laughs> I'm be sorry love to have owner. people at our meetings the more people here generally the better we plan on yeah. staying here so, forever um, so <laughs> we we love to see new faces here and we love to see people take an active interest in their town not just not in my backyard but everything we do here has a, a larger reach for the town in general mm-hmm so, and we are an agricultural community, yeah. so we are certainly going to take those aspects into account. Thanks. I appreciate what I think Kevin said. It would, I just really appreciate that attention to the, the trees, the vegetation. There is a lot. There's a lot of animals there. I mean, there's beautiful fox. There's there's a lot of lot of animals that live in there. And I know that I'm not trying to. I I know I'm a little person. I can't stop anything. But thanks for paying attention to that aspect. And if that could maybe just be held, you know close during this whole process we'd really appreciate that we thank you for your time this evening thank you anybody else uh, questions comments or concerns please step on up uh, the young lady I met you briefly downstairs in the lobby yeah you sent me in the wrong place no I didn't no. <laughs> this is the third floor the, the, this is the second floor oh what oh yeah a, we're on floor two there's a third floor I I apologize That's because okay. I had no idea. I my thought we were the top floor. My name is Gail A. Sidorian, and I am the direct about a five <clears throat> silver street. So right in back of me is this giant hole where I'm hoping that they'll fill most of it all in and put up a fence around it and the trees. And my other concern is the water. The, with all those houses being built and all those people there i've already had to replace my well once i really don't want to do it again and if i have to i'd like them to be responsible for it so that's my concern yes mr yep. chair what kind, of well, what kind of well do you have i have a i think now it's about 300 feet down because the other one was a shallow one and it, when wayne vaughn was digging back there he dried out my well and I had to put another one in. So now I'm hoping I don't have to do that again. Sure. We are going to take precautions and we will put in testing pits and monitoring wells um, that will test and monitoring the amount of, of water and water table in regards to that. 
And if something does happen, would they be responsible for it? Um, I would, I, unless, I, I'm not sure on that. I can't answer that question. I would, I would have to lean towards Mr. Bott to. I don't have an answer for that. I don't have an answer for that either. Maybe we can find an answer for that in regards. I think a direct correlation would have to be shown. So I know it's been, there's been some issues with Wells recently in town and uh, the owner of the property did step up and take care of them. So uh, I don't have an answer for you. Okay. Well, I'm right in front of their property. Now, it, um, if I'm looking at the map, are you at like... Uh, Five Silver Street. I think that's, oh, okay. I think it's going to be this one right here. Okay, all right, so, yeah. Oh, and uh, that was the well you had that's, questioned That's on. the well that yes. I was questioning. Okay. The good news is I feel that it's a deep well. Uh, I don't know what the, what well there, are you, are you considering a, a deep or shallow well for the project? I mean, that's, that's a question that we can, that we can ask is, you know, if it's going to be a deep we, we, or a okay, we'll get, we'll get an answer for that too. Is yeah. yours a shallow well or a deep well? Oh, I'm not sure. She's 300, 300 feet. Three, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a deep well. Okay. John, we don't know yet, but um, that'll be all part of. It. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what I figured. We'll, we'll, uh, something to address. All right. So we'll have more answers for you, hopefully, at our next public hearing on this. Okay. Thank you very much. No, thank you. And it, Mr. Chair, it's, it's fair for. Um, it's fair for us to ask you to note these concerns of the public as well as ours, right? Oh, 100%. Yes. Okay, good. Um, he beat you, Alice. My name's Alan Hanford. I, uh, my wife and I live across the street from all of this. And the, my main fear is not getting water and the problem is getting rid of sewage. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those are, those are two things we pay very close attention to. Yep. Good evening. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Alice McMahon and I live at 2 Silver Street. And my concern is how much of an effect this complex is going to have on the traffic. Um, beautiful example is they paved 58 and they sent the traffic down Silver Street. Made it very impossible to get out of the driveway. And I know for a fact myself, and I spoke with the chief of police today, we almost both got rear-ended at the other end of Silver Street because they ignored the traffic sign. Um, are they going to be able to come out onto Silver Street or are they going to be able to go out onto Main Street? Um, it's currently proposed on uh, Silver. Silver Street and uh, we're going to want to, we'll, our engineer will check in, on the alignment of, of the road exit in relation to existing driveways. Uh, and we've also asked the question of um, where is this in relation to the intersection? So those are those are certainly tra and Mr. Robinson certainly brought up the traffic, the question on traffic. Right. So we will be looking in further into those. Right. Well, I've been living there thirty something years, and I'd have to tell you I've seen maybe twelve to fourteen fatalities at that light because people try to go through the light very quickly when they get there. I'm right there <laughs> before the light. So um, it, it's it's a big concern. I can, and yes. I I know with it being a 55 plus, we're looking probably at an increase of um, EMTs and everything coming in down on the street. Right. So we so, yeah we've definitely uh, put in uh, a request for um, the fire department, the police department, and yes, we we will check with the uh, EMTs in regards to any concerns that they might have with with access to the site. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you.
Excuse me. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Leah Tebow. I live in Waterview Village at 17 Jill Marie Drive. And I'm, there's like five or six houses on Jill Marie Drive that are right up against the fence or the buffer, buffer zone that um, where the fence is or whatever there's going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time from where I am. Which, which is You're on the right, Leah. Yeah. The big. You're on the right where John is pointing okay. to. Okay. Oh. So basically the houses are going to be closer to Main Street? Yeah. So this whole property, um, there's the infiltration system. Could you point that out to her? Yeah, give me down in there so if we could take into consideration that you'd have to go past all of that see that line that's about six inches up now yeah. it's about a foot up yeah all the way down that line then you're going to go across a like a gravel paved road and then the houses are those gray the dark gray, gray areas yeah. so you're significantly away from it so, okay. Right. These would be the houses here, and this is being proposed as as open space, so okay. open land. So. Okay. Okay. Um, the question I had also was that somebody had said something about rodents, and um, we have, like I say, the four or five houses. We've just had an awful lot of rats. Never had that problem with rats. I mean, we've had mice, of course. Everybody does. But um, I've got holes under my house now, under my, um, and so is, would there be anybody that I could go to for the repairs on that? Uh, I've got pictures of, of dead rats. Right, uh, you'd have to speak to the Board of Health in regards to okay. that. But um, when, it, when it comes to um, the construction aspect, we're gonna request right. uh, a vermin control plan if they're gonna be disturbing the earth. And then once the, um, if and when the, it, the complex is built, there will be vermin control plans in effect in regards to, to the, okay. the whole of the development. Because we've had like three houses next to me that have had to have Terminex and hire them to come because there's so many of them. And, um, We've been trying to take care of it, but it's it's kind of difficult. And my cat isn't too happy, so I can't. She doesn't try to get at them, so. But, okay, so Board of Health, I would check with them. You call them, right? Yeah, call them in the morning and, and I'll, make your I'll issues. Prop, I'll go to the next meeting and just see what comes up with that. Okay, thank you very much. No, thank you, Mrs. Sure. Tebow. Who takes these papers? We'll just write this one. Okay. Okay. Do we have any further questions, comments, or concerns? I'm seeing none. I do. Um, um, okay. okay. No, please. So you said you did some fill in the pond on the map. Could you show me where the pond was then? What? Was it where the development is going to be, or was it where... The big hole on the right is. You can see the depression there and the contour lines. Yeah. So that's where they. And that was due to uh, earth removal projects? Is that what was? That was our understanding historically that it was excavated too low. Well, I'm, I'm expecting if you had a negative determination right. from CONCOM that that would have been. So uh, my next question would be, uh, how deep was that? Can you have any idea how deep it was? I, uh, I'd say three or four feet maybe, it wasn't very deep. So if you have still... It was deeper than three or four feet. You see it every day almost. So, well, my concern is, is you're going to be putting a complex there, and if it wasn't that deep, and you get a pool in there, and you start digging in there, aren't you going to just end up with water? I think it 
think they're filling. I think they're building out. Yeah, I don't. I I don't believe so. The engineers have. Well, well, we'll we'll have ask Andy for a test fit in that area. But you, you understand? I, what I understand saying. what you're if saying. You yes. Water tables that high, and yeah. you're doing solar systems. You're going to be flooding them. Uh, for in that area, we did uh, do test pits out there for drainage purposes, and when we did that, we've we'll have fill in that area. And it was looking just from like the garage slab to down to where groundwater was in that area. It was like 11 feet or so. So it, it, there was a pretty significant drop from where the groundwater is from where the proposed grade is going to be because we're filling that area. Well, it's kind of weird to have a pond that never dried up if, if it's 11 feet down. I mean, you know, I mean, well. It didn't have a oh, yeah. water source to it. And oh, yeah. The water source is going to be the water table. Yeah, the... Um, right, but it was only three feet down, deep. Uh, uh, if you look where, where groundwater is on the, the lower, um, that ponding area, yeah. on the that, like where the water was, is around like a 107 the elevation. That's more indicative of where the groundwater is, not where the water is for that... Um, the western area where the development's going to be that's not indicative of where groundwater is it was better representation was that lower area down by the 107 uh, you're like 120 right yeah it's way up that's it, what i thought i was reading up there yep the grade level is about 120 up there yeah and the standing water where that was lower area is 107 ish so about 18 feet different yeah so it's pretty significant and are you going to add dirt up in there or is that or are you taking dirt out uh, to do the for complex for which area? For the whole complex that you're going to put in there. Yeah, we're, we'll be filling. Adding or taking? We'll, we'll be we'll be filling. Okay. Adding, yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll follow up so we can show you. So basically, the one down, um, the lower one was indicative of scarring into the water table, whereas the upper one wasn't. So we'll follow up, and we'll follow well, up with fuss. Right. I don't want to see you build great. something that, yeah. you know, five years is yeah. the flood note. Yeah, good. Like the gentleman said, you know, yeah. cracking. Good, great questions. I just need to find out if, you know, was that something that was perched? I, I just don't know the answer. Right. I mean, I got a place that, you know, I have to put a well pump in, you know. Yep. No matter where I dig, once I hit four feet, I'm in water. We're, so we're confident it's indicative down to the, I want to say the east. We'll get that information to you. All yeah. right, thank you. I agree. And when was this filled in? Did I miss that? When was that pond filled in? When was that depression filled in again? Get the dates. We have ones from the guys working. So. But within the last? It was after the negative determination. So. so following the negative determination, and I think Taylor said that the negative determination was 2020. So that would have been uh, in the last, is that four years? If we can get that information here. Why did they fill it in, do you know? I think Jim just said it's, when we go out there, and I understand that uh, the chairman talked about a site visit. If you go out there, it's, it's uneven, it's very scarred. Everything's, um, it's interesting site to navigate. Um, so if you go out there, um, we can ask him to describe what did you do, you know, et cetera, what's this, what's that? Um, there's, somebody had mentioned this, there are diff different tailings, piles. It's, it's just indicative of, because um, a raw site that has the combination of being a gravel pit, and then it also has um, the 150 foot wide um, high tension wire um, easement that goes through it, as I believe Andrea mentioned. It's an interesting site, and it's a site that just, um, it's just something that hasn't really been shown a lot of love, uh, quote unquote. I've seen it from a distance. Yeah. I don't live too far from it either. If you drive onto it, like you drive by it and you look, you know, but when you actually drive onto it and you kind of realize you can see everything, like in back of, I think it was um, our neighbor at number five, everything over there is kind of, um, you know, chunky. But if we get there and it's um, something that we, you know, we can meet you folks and, and take a walk, we can take a look at that. And instead of me describing it, I was going to take pictures. I started taking them, and um, the, the phone doesn't distinguish. You know what I mean? The field, the depth. If you go there and you get out, you can actually see it. Any other questions or concerns? No, uh, anybody from the public uh, have any questions or concerns? No. Uh, so it's a range of site walk. Uh, is there a time that's good for you, Mr. Robinson? 
anytime between six and seven o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And what? No, no. What? What? What just, nights? I, I can't do that on Mondays and Fridays. So we're talking a Tuesday or Wednesday, mm -hmm. or Thursday. Mm -hmm. Does any of that work for you, gentlemen? No Wednesday for me. Oh. Oh, Tuesday or Thursday then? Yeah, if you don't mind. And how we set for? We have um, training section. So I'm not going to call well, until just, just a couple more. So obviously, uh, we'd like some stakes on the site. So we need to find out what the best day of the week is for you folks, and then let them know to it's, give them time to get this thing. It's going to be a Thursday, and then what what kind and, of time? And, we, and what would you like um, staked? Would we like some of the corners of the buildings, or what? Um, the road. Okay, so road, um, center line of the road coming in, can do that. What else would, um, what else would um, you like identified? The the corners of the uh, six. Yeah, I would venture to say the corners where the development's going to be at one, two, three, four, five, six, center line of the road and yep. where the road ends at. Yep. In relationship to the property line. Perfect. Um, we'd also like. To, um, See where the proposed wells are going to be. Yep. And uh, basin. Yeah. We'd like to see the basin, and I I think we'll give you some time to work with the uh, the leaching field for the septic. Yep. Are we talking? Um, how much time do we need? Oh wow. Um, so Taylor's, well, Taylor's saying a week. Um, would we want to do next week or a week after? Well, it's going to be Thursday, and I want to check with Mr. Bott on our training schedule because yeah. I know it's Thursday. Well, uh, I, I can tell you that it's not the 24th because you can't make the 24th. Uh, so the 24th is probably the best date. I'm going to venture to say that continuing this hearing would be likely a month out considering we haven't heard from Andy. So we want to get the review from Fuss and O'Neill yep. into their hands for them to respond to some of those things. So my two suggestions would be a site visit on uh, uh, 824 uh, and uh, continue this hearing until uh, uh, that's September 12th likely. That's our first meeting in September. Okay, does that work for us? Uh, and that was 6, 6 p.m. on the 24th, Tom? And I think it's the last Thursday. Okay. Thank you. have what? Housing. Oh. Yeah, that would be the 31st. Okay. Yes, I'm not available. You're not available on the 24th. That, that was the night that, that the was training the night. was. Right. So going to be, and what, I'm going to be up in Boston. What night's our training, Mr. Bott? Well, we're going to talk about that at the end of the meeting because I don't have a confirmation from you folks. Okay. Um, so can we do our training on the 17th and do the site walk on the 31st? I've got an email into our trainer asking how's the 17th or the 31st work. So we'll flip them. If training's on the 17th, we'll do the site visit on the 31st Okay. or vice versa. Because you're saying you guys should have be able yeah. to have things staked out by the 17th? Okay. Okay. Those dates work for us. Okay. So are we talking about 6 p.m. for the site walk? 6 p.m. I site personally won't be there till 6.15, but I don't want to hold everybody no, no. up. We'll I'll stall 7, 15, for you. 15. Okay, so site walk 6.15, either 8.17 or 8.31. 8.17 or 8.31 with... Um, Potential meeting September Super 12th. 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 Thank you very much. Great. And we'll have Andy here for that meeting as well. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. I will Appreciate accept it. a motion from the board to continue the public hearing on the application of Weather Vane at Silver Street uh, to September 12th 
Uh, meeting room one, 7 p.m., Carver Town Hall. I'll make that said motion. Motion made by Mr. Robinson. Second. Second by Mr. Gasky. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. John Gasky says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Alan Cedillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Thank you all very much. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Do, do we, um, are you familiar with, oh, handsome gentleman over there, <laughs> that one is the guy that you want to go to. Okay, um, okay. um yeah, uh, we're going to take, uh, take a two minute break right now, uh, we're going to take a two minute bathroom break. Good evening, gentlemen. Our next order of business is a public hearing continued on Jeff Opachinski MBO precast requesting a site plan review pursuant to sections 2230 and 3100 of the Carver Zoning Bylaw for property located at 4 Marion Drive in Carver, Mass. Assessors Map 21, Lot 4 2 in the Industrial C IC Zoning District. Applicant proposes the construction of a 90 by 160 pole barn on previously, on previously developed area at the MBO precast concrete plant. All right. Um, I think we were, did the site walk and we were only waiting to see what uh, Fuss and O'Neill had to say on them? <coughs> yes, so uh, this didn't go to Fuss and O'Neill because it wasn't any technical merit to it. There wasn't any drainage, there wasn't any traffic, there was putting a building on the site, so we didn't send it to Fuss and O'Neill. Uh, we were waiting to hear for a clarification from uh, the police department where they had a note about new roads. So I talked to, uh, to uh, uh, Jesse Boyle about that. Uh, that memo he sent had this sort of artifact of these new roads from a, a previous decision or previous comment that he made. Uh, so uh, the only outstanding issue was was there new roads to be paved and there, there weren't any. Uh, so uh, the only comment that Jesse had, which is included in the draft decision, which I think you have in your books. Yes. Um, was uh, uh, new building shall conform with the fire code. Buildings over 7,500 square foot are required to have automatic sprinklers. Uh, this may not apply to the proposed building because it appears to be a utility one with no walls or electricity or plumbing. Uh, if they were to be enclosed or altered at a later date, further plans uh, reviewed by the fire department and the building department would be necessary. Uh, so we've got uh, an existing site. Um, it had a, uh, we've got quite a history as what I went back uh, looking at this. In the, uh, let's see here. Um, MBO pre-crash was <coughs> the site plan and a special permit approval for this on October 17, 2006. They had a minor modification for the site plan on October, August 7th, 2017, and a special permit for a contractor's yard on December 1, 2009. So there's been a number of special permits on the site, and due to the fact <coughs> that they weren't disturbing the site other than digging up the concrete to put the post uh, the, uh, the uh, framing in for the uh, foundation for the building, the 160 foot by 90 foot pole barn, uh, there's no review by Fasten on well, the board requested it, and uh, if, if if that was how it was felt at the time, it should have been brought up. But there was, the board requested the technical assistance of, of Fuss and O'Neill to make sure that uh, this was in compliance, and and that should have been noted at the time, or any objections should have been, or concerns should have been brought up at that time. Not. Yeah, I think I said last time that we didn't send it to uh, Fuss and O'Neill because there wasn't a technical component. We're not. Digging up the earth, we're not changing the traffic pattern. They're putting. There are engineers. Yeah, and I manage the process. 
And if you want to, you know, uh, uh, if the board requests technical information, it should be provided. Uh, you have the technical information you have, uh, and there's nothing wrong with this site uh, that raises to the level of bringing our consulting engineer onto the site. I, I don't want to get into this now. Um, is there any further to add in regards to this? Nope. Gentlemen, anything further that you wish to add? No. Oh. All right. Um, and seeing, um, seeing on the board, uh, the chair will. It, it, well, before you make that, I mean, the only thing I got to add is um, I did the site walk. There is a river there, and we just wanted to see um, if putting the roof on there, directing the water, is going to affect anything over there. That's why we wanted Andy to take a look at it. That's all. Um, I'm not a, that's not my job. Without him looking at it, and it's hard for me to say anything other than no on this because I don't have all the information I need. Well, as we talked about before, uh, the it, site exists as a pervious site. So they're putting on a spot that already has the drainage has been approved and they're putting a metal building over top of that. Worst case scenario is, is the water's going to be cleaner on the site because it's hitting the roof of the building versus the pavement. There's no changes to the drainage. There's no changes to the uh, impervious surface. There's no changes to traffic circulation. There was an it was a drainage swale. It wasn't a river. Yeah, it's a drainage swale. Yeah, it's a swale. It's, it's not a subdivision. A river yeah, is a whole different ball. Well, I just saw all the water down. Right, there. but it's yeah. on the plan. Is that's where the water drains now. It's to go to that's where the water's going to drain tomorrow after it's built. It goes through a storm scepter. It's it's right on that. Like catch basins and then through into the the yeah, there was a catch basin uh, that maybe you saw off. Um, yeah, we just wanted his there. opinion on what he thought about the, the building the, up there. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be glad. And I understand. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's still the same piece of property. It's just you know you are going to have it slanted. So you know you, you you know so the water that's supposed to lay in the middle of the building is not going to be there because it's all being diverted. That's all. So it's a little bit more one way and the other way than it is spread out evenly. You understand what I'm saying? But it's actually going, it's going the other towards way. the catch base on a little bit more. <laughs> it's it's, yeah. better. it's that'll, actually better for that'll the help it. Right. Yeah. We're That's good the, then. We're good then. All right. Yeah. So, the, the, and you, you have no intention of putting up walls, electricity, or plumbing? Okay. So the chair will accept the motion to, uh, Approve the construction of a 90 by 160 by 32. Would you like me to read the draft decision just for the record, just so we're familiar with all the conditions and things like that? It's well, very okay. short. All right. Well, the conditions that we're looking to include are reflected in um, Jesse Boyle's. There should be no walls, electricity, plumbing, and it is not to be enclosed or altered. Those are the conditions. Correct. And there will be, oh, the conditions are uh, uh, prior to the con issuance of a certificate of occupancy, uh, any outstanding balance for re review and inspection deposit account will be paid because in spite of the fact that Andy doesn't have anything to review at this point, he has to review an as-built at the end of the day to make sure it's built for the plant. So uh, the those conditions include prior to that, any outstanding balance for the review and inspection account will be paid. An as-built plan will be submitted to the town engineer and the planning department in both electronic and hard copy format prior to the final inspection. In accordance with uh, 3180 compliance to Carver Zoning Bylaw, the engineer will expect the project to ensure it's been completed uh, in compliance with the approved site plan and its conditions. And the building shall have no walls, electricity, plumbing, and is not to be enclosed or altered from the plan. Yeah, that's in the uh, in the findings of the property, but we can add that to the condition if you want. I would like to add those. Right. Those are the, the concerns of 
uh, Assistant Deputy Chief Jesse Boyle. I'll plug those in as a uh, condition number uh, four. All right, the chair will uh, accept the motion to approve with the conditions as stated. I will make said motion. Motion made by Ms. Sardillo. Second. Second by Ms. Mr. Gasky. Uh, do we have any concerns, questions, or comments? Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. And Mr. Dion says aye. John Gasky says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Ellen Sardillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. All right, and thank just you. for the technicality, we need to close the hearing as well. Oh, thank you very much. Um, the chair will accept the motion to close the public hearing of Jeff Opachinski, MBO precast, requesting site plan review for the construction of a 90 by 60 by 32 foot pole barn on previously developed area at the MBO precast concrete plant. I'll make that said motion. Second. Oh, motion made by Mr. Robinson, seconded by Ms. Sardillo. Do we have any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. John Gasky says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Ellen Sardillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. You're Thank you again. Because you voted what it would be before you close the uh, It's, I mean, uh, you can do them in either, either, either order. Okay. It's, it's just nice to. It's, it's just close the public hearing. Usually, you close the public hearing then vote. I, I would prefer yeah. to do it that way, but it's know, just there's it's no different. requirement to do it one way or the other. Just before they go. Thank you. All set. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <clears throat> Our next order of business is town planner notes. All right. So the. So uh, we got an email from uh, Eversource today, uh, basically uh, letting us know that uh, Eversource is having some webinars about electrical vehicle uh, charging. So we'll put this on our website as well. So they are having three webinars, uh, one about just electric vehicles, one about what you need to know about charging systems, and uh, another about uh, a second about those electric vehicles. So the dates are... Uh, September 14th, September 21st, and August 22nd. So for those folks who are interested in finding out more about these sort of things, uh, you can plug into the webinar and read all about it. Are they gonna, are they gonna be updated with our latest fire in uh, Wareham? I saw that on the paper the other day, yeah. Um, so uh, in addition, planner's uh, notes, we have, uh, our training that we need to put together for subdivision uh, and uh, ANRs. Uh, and last time we had a, a couple of folks respond to things. So I'd heard from our trainer that the 24th worked for her, uh, but doesn't work for us. Uh, and because you know we're in the midst of all this stuff right now for subdivision ANRs, it's just you know very important for us to kind of get up to speed on these things. So today I emailed her back uh, and asked how the 14th, or oh, pardon me, how the, give me a second to get to that. 17th or 31st. Thank you, how the 17th or the 31st worked. Uh, so I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from her, but I need to know from the board uh, how those dates work for you. Because the reason we scratched it is because people couldn't make it, and it's just important that we get this stuff done. So what's the board's uh, schedule looking like for 817 or 824? 831. Thank you. Eight. 17 or 31. I don't do math. Is that, okay. Uh, is that okay. The 24th is out. Yep, 24th is out. Is that Labor Day weekend? I think Labor Day weekend is next weekend. Uh, follow, yeah. Really? Hang on. The 31st is... Yes, you're right. The 6th, 31st is right after, is right before Labor Day. I'm fine with the 31st. Like, yep. I was just curious. But so this is going to be based on, we're going to do either or. All. We're either going to have a site plan or we're going to have our... Yeah, we got two dates. Yes. Right. One night we're going to do a site walk, and we're the other night busy. we're going to do. So training. we're going to be busy the seventeenth and the thirty-first. We're yeah. just determining what we're doing either night. Yes. Yeah. So, can I get an acknowledgement? Everybody's available either the seventeenth 
or the 31st. And that's Thursdays. Yes, those are Thursdays. Yep, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Well, if we have that meeting, uh, what time will it start? Uh, six. And we'll have some uh, some introductions and things like that. Kevin uh, uh, has uh, a 6.15 uh, arrival time for most of the stuff he does these days because of his other job. Well, on a good note, let's hope that that's because the person that I'm with <coughs> is continuing to live. I, I have a lot of confidence in you, dude. Thank you. But... I'm out to break hospice's records. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Carter's killing me right now because he's, uh, he's, he's been in hospice a long time. And, uh, and Rosalind passed away not too long ago, right? Uh, no, diagnosed with Alzheimer's, I heard. Oh. Yeah, he's, that's, that's like Jimmy's wife, it's been uh, a great man. You know, it's been a tough, tough oh, time yeah. for him. I, yeah. So, I will let uh, the trainer know that we've got uh, uh, both of those dates available. Uh, also, we've got a couple of decisions uh, that we had talked about uh, signing. Uh, we've got the rescission plan decision, and we've got the preliminary subject plan decision. So you've got some things in your packets. I had put together a decision for uh, Jeff Opachinski. No, uh, in well, I did, but in addition to that, uh, we also had uh, Definitive subdivision decision plan? Yeah, so the, uh, the preliminary subdivision plan. I had put together a decision and uh, sent it out to the board. And uh, Connie uh, made some edits and uh, sort of uh, wrote some additional information in the decision. Uh, when I got that, uh, uh, and a lot of that deals with uh, uh, the urban redevelopment area, um, urban redevelopment plan. And as we talked about before, the board can regulate anything that's in their regulations. But there's nothing in their regulations about urban redevelopment plan. So uh, I had suggested that uh, uh, that not be in there. Because in a preliminary plan, and, and this is the weird thing about Massachusetts general law, in a preliminary plan, uh, they don't have any teeth. They're advisory. But in the definitive plan, uh, uh, someone can appeal that. So you can write anything you want, essentially, in a preliminary plan, and nobody's going to appeal it. But if you're, uh, you want to make sure you're regulating the things that you're allowed to regulate and putting those things into that. And that's part of the training. And that's some of the slides that I actually provided for you guys that I believe are also in your packet. So you've probably got some green slides that look like these things uh, that sort of talk about, you know, what's a preliminary plan? Uh, how do you go about regulating that? So my recommendation uh, in my draft decision uh, was not to include any of that information because uh, the urban redevelopment plan is not in your subdivision regulations. Um, and town council, uh, when I sent this email to them last week, uh, I was waiting for a reply back from them before I did anything else and sent the decision out. Uh, so their recommendation was that my email was fine and to, uh, to essentially stick to the requirements of the subdivision regulations. Um, I took Connie's decision that he drafted because uh, he added some information about it. And the reason my decision was so short uh, be was because uh, the board had said, well, we don't have enough information to make uh, a, uh, 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 what was the, uh, we don't have enough information to make a, an informed decision. I'm paraphrasing at this point. Um, did not give enough information to make an informed decision on the plan. Uh, so uh, I kept it short, put Andy's notes in there, because Andy's notes talk about what are the deficiencies of the plan and one of the things they're going to have to put together. So my recommendation would be to keep it short. If we want to talk about the things that they didn't put into the plan that Connie had noted for sections 4, sections 9, sections 14, sections 20, sections, uh, those are fine. Uh, but uh, my recommendation, uh, town council's recommendation, would be uh, to, to keep the plan, uh, your decision, within the four corners of what's in your subdivision regulations. Uh, and that's what I would recommend for the board to do. So, Mr. Ball. Yes, sir. So, I, I remember that meeting. Um, I did have a question. If you had a already approved plan, not rescinded, how can you turn around and put, ask for another approved plan on top of that plan? Well, people, 
You got, couldn't answer you, it, and she couldn't answer it. No, uh, maybe. Uh, and we were going to ask legal counsel, yeah. and I haven't heard anything back. So, there are subdivision plans over subdivision plans in lots of places. Uh, sometimes people, and uh, the law of Massachusetts is if you don't execute a subdivision plan within two years, if you don't start on that, it expires. So there are a lot of expired subdivision plans around the, around the Commonwealth. And they just sort of go away because they're not valid anymore. Okay. Very few people come in and decide to rescind the plan. That's why it's a bit unusual for someone to rescind a plan. But when you've got as many different layers and as many concerns as they have, they wanted to just clean the slate. So you can stack plans on top of plans because they've, re they've expired after two years. Uh, well, some people have an automatic rescission provision in their bylaws as but well. But didn't they put a road in so that wouldn't... Uh, there's, no, there's no road in. Well, they made a dead end in there. There's, there's a... I was showing you can't go in there. They blocked it all so, up. So that's a public road. That's not their property. Well, I don't know. I haven't been yeah. down there for a sidewalk. I'm just telling you yeah. what I'm thinking, and that's why I was asking that question. So, so their property starts on the, the west side of, uh, of uh, uh, Montello Street. So okay. the town cutting off Montello Street, putting in a new driveway and things like that, uh, that's not their subdivision plan. Those are changes to the street that are going to benefit some future development there so people don't have to drive through that same driveway through Obashans. But that road work and that grant proposed road work that the town did through, uh, I think it was uh, on ARPA grant, uh, is not part of their subdivision plan. So only the things that are on their property. So the old plan showed a roadway that was never built. Uh, and frankly, that subdivision plan has likely expired. And so uh, you can put plans on top of the land. Sometimes I have people come to me when I was in Kingston. This happened a lot in a sort of more of a summer community where there was a lot left over from a 1954 plan that didn't get, the road didn't get built. And somebody said, well, I want to build, I want to build on that lot, but in the absence of a road, they can't because there's, there's no road there. They have to build it to the contemporary standard uh, versus something that was done in the 1950s. So the cleanest thing to do for lots of folks, but it's an expense that you have to go through to have an engineer do all this stuff and put together a rescission plan. So you don't see a whole lot of them. I've seen, uh, I, I, I saw probably none in Kingston over 20 years. So you said years. the plan's only good for two years. Yeah, so the Massachusetts general law says uh, your uh, subdivision plan is good for two years unless you ask to extend it for good cause. And so then the board asks, well, what's your good cause? You know, if your good cause is uh, I, I didn't get to it, I broke, I was whatever, that's not a good cause. But you can extend it. But after a while, they go away. So the cleanest thing to do, particularly for this case, in their case, and it's the applicant's decision. Because Massachusetts generally doesn't make subdivision plans discretionary. You don't get a choice. If they file a plan and the plan meets your regulations, Massachusetts General Law says a subdivision plan shall be approved. So you get two years to build them. If you don't build them, they're no good anymore. They get stacked up in the registry, but they're not valid anymore. People can put plans over top of plans because the new plan is the plan of record because the old one's expired. So, so within six months, someone could put a plan on top of that and be no problem? Uh, well, they have to come to the planning board to get it approved. But what I'm saying is so... If you had an approved plan yep. and, and six months went by and someone come in with another plan, they could put it on top of that. Plan. Well, that would be a modification of the existing plan because that plan is good for two years from the time they do it. All right. So the problem so three is years, that, three, that, three years and no extension. Two years has not passed down there, though. Yeah. Two years has not passed. Since the original subdivision plan? No, I'm, we're talking the 44 behind that, which I'm correct, with just the business back. There's no, there's no current sub site plan a subdivision plan and in effect just the urban renewal plan. Uh, well, uh, well that urban renewal plan so that doesn't matter you can put a subdivision on top of that yeah so the urban renewal plan and we talked about this a bit before is when someone wants to put buildings on the property so a subdivision plan is where the road is going to be and where the lots are going to be and where the drainage 
for that road and for those lots are going to be. And they put out the buildable, you know, put out setbacks on the plan. When you want to come in and get a special permit to build a building on it, that's what triggers the urban renewal plan. So if somebody says, I want to put, uh, uh, you know, uh, a 40,000 square foot building on the site, then we start talking about how does that affect the urban renewal plan? So when we had this discussion with the site plans and the sub, I mean the subdivision plans before, uh, somebody had called uh, uh, MEPA and said we got a, 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 a citizen complaint inquiry that someone was uh, was not you know complying with the MEPA plan. So I sent the folks at uh, at MEPA uh, all the information about the subdivision plans and things like that, and they said that's fine. I said and their, their subdivision plan is a one point and I'm working from memory, a 1.24 acre lot, a 4.21 acre lot, and a 212 acre lot. And I said, it's likely when people do this that they're probably going to try to sell one of those smaller lots, or maybe two of them, to make some money to do the rest of the, uh, the work that they have to do. The folks at MEPA said, well, keep us abreast of that because we'd be concerned about someone trying to do some segmentation by doing a plan that's, you know, a thousand little plans versus one big plan. So when they come, when someone comes in, a buyer of the property or the people who own it today, when they come in to do a plan for a building, a store, whatever it is, we're going to send that to MEPA to say, you know, here's what's going on, uh, here's what's transpiring to make sure that MEPA is aware of what, uh, whether people are complying with the urban renewal plan. Okay. But the urban renewal plan is only when someone wants to do something that they're putting buildings up, they're putting parking up, they're putting uses on the site. Subdivision plan is only the road and the lots, there's no buildings on them. So it doesn't trigger anything on the urban renewal plan. The urban renewal plan right now is what it is uh, until somebody comes in and says, I want to build at that, or they say, I don't want to build what was originally proposed, and I want to come back in and look at changing that, and then we go through that process with uh, DHCD, with MEPA, and with DEP, and working through uh, changes and amendments to the urban renewal plan. So just boxes, just, just lots on the ground, not urban renewal plan. Putting buildings on those lots, urban renewal plan. Trying to cut it up into lots of little parses, potential segmentation of the urban renewal plan, and MEPA and DEP are both going to, you know, uh, put their, you know, they're, they're, they're going to put their thumb on it at that point. That's how the process works. So it, it, it's, uh, I've been at this a long time, and sometimes I look at the stuff that I'm doing, and I'm going, and, and you, you do you know, a, a, a lot of these in a row. You go, well, what, what, why am I doing that? And you go back and read the law and go, oh, that's right, because that's what the law says. So it's really confusing, even for a guy who's been at this for a long, long time. Yeah, at times things do just get confusing. It's yeah. like, you know, well, wait a minute. But subdivisions are, by right, special permits or not. So a special permit invokes that urban renewal plan, a subdivision plan does not. Because it's just where the road's going to be, where the lots are going to be. It does say that um, the assembled site as a whole, once all the infrastructure and requirements are done, may be subdivided. After it's been built. Well, once the requirements of MEPA have been met. I'm met, okay. Um, all right, we all set? All set, yep, thank you. All right. Um, in regards to the uh, subdivision rescission plan, I've, I've met Mr. Bott in the middle and removed all references to uh, the URP in regards to this decision um, because I might have been the only one with that particular issue, may or may not have. Um, if you would like to review, did you, have you seen mine? I haven't seen yours. Uh, yeah, so in your books, in, in your books, you should have edited a, in regards to, to yeah. Mr. Bott's recommendation. So in your books, you're going to have something that says Connie's draft. Oh, there's three pages, and you got a blank sheet, and then you got my edits of Connie's draft where I lined out the URP stuff, and then at the back 
we have uh, the uh, alternate town planner's decision that basically have all the things that Connie noted that were not uh, 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 this, this, this. Uh, were concerns for, about sections four sections nine things that are actually in the subdivision. Mm -hmm. right? Well, it, I had one with all that that I crossed out included, and Mr. Vaught had one that was. Yeah, so before I vote on this, I want to read both. Well, actually, we've already voted. Huh? We've already voted. We've already voted. It's, yes, it's, you, you're welcome to read the both, but his just stops. Oh, I thought these were, uh, I thought. His stops here. It's a matter of which one we're going to sign. And he's, he's removed all the rest of it, but I just removed what was the RDA, and I kept, this is the paragraph, more or less, that was kept in. Because I have that long one, and we can, his alternative just ended with the overlay district there. Okay. Well, I want to be able to read this based right. on what, what, are we, what are we doing. All right, well, why don't it's, we, uh, it's the decision. Why don't, why don't we take a minute? Yeah. Take a look at it. I'm going to go. This is an okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yep, we'll take a, a couple minute break. I think you said he was going to make it four. Um, I I thought condition four was the prohibit uh, prohibition against walls, electricity, or plumbing, or enclosure. I thought gotcha. that's what we approved was. No walls, electricity, plumbing, or enclosure. What did I put down for condition number four? If it were to be enclosed or altered at a later date, further plans reviewed by the fire department and building official will be necessary. All I, right, I'll fix that. I, Take a second, make that. Sure. Because then it becomes a, an entirely different building. Well, that is necessary to put in fire suppression. They don't need fire suppression. They don't need gutters and uh, supporting structures. It'll. Uh, it doesn't. It's on concrete, so it doesn't have any foundation to it. You know. All right. So we're good with that one. All right. No, that's the. That's the precision. For which one? For uh, Route Forty Four. Is that the decision plan? Precision, yeah. Uh, I, I don't have an issue with it. Are you all squared with it? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll... Are y'all okay with uh, with Connie's latest revision? All right. Nice. Um, is that acceptable to the board, the revised... That's it? acceptable to me. I, to pull, I went by Tom's recommendation and pulled out Yep. That. So, um, all right, we'll go with that. And then, uh, uh, what's uh, I lost my... And the rescission plan's solid with everybody, so we'll sign that. Um, the chair will accept a motion to approve the amended minutes of 7-11-2023. I'll make that said motion. Motion made by Mr. Robinson, seconded by Ms. Sordillo. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. Abstain. Kevin Robinson says aye. And Mr. Dillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye, so that's 4011. C. Robinson and Mr. Dillo, 401. I wasn't here for that one. Oh. Approved. Uh, discussion from the board? Uh, anything they want? talk to people in town about seeing none the chair will accept a motion for adjournment i'll make said motion motion made by mr dion do i have a second second a second by mr gatsky uh mr dion 
Mr. Dion says aye. John Gasky says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Ellen says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Uh, thank you, every, everyone, for joining us this evening, and you have a pleasant night.